Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesday Live with Jen and Joe. Uh, today, we are super excited. We have a very special guest, an author, a real estate investor. Um, David has written the book, Profit First for Real Estate Investing. We read the book last year. Um, it was super helpful and impactful for our business. We don't endorse anything that we don't believe in. And this was a tremendous help to us and a lot of our past students yeah. um, who found a ton of value in his book. So if you haven't already gotten a copy of David's book, we're going to hook y'all up. We got something special for you, but also too, you need to read the book. It is incredible. So David- Not only read it, but implement it. I'm sure David's going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah. uh, Dave, do you want to just introduce yourself real quick? And then we have some cool questions we're going to go over too. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so- I am I know I don't look like it, but I'm actually an entrepreneur, real estate investor. I look more like the numbers person that I would like, spreadsheets and the the stuff that I wrote about, you know, and the profit first system and all of that. But that's what appealed to me about it. It appealed to me as an entrepreneur of a simple way to manage the money. Because everyone, Jen and Joe are gonna teach you great ways to bring money into the business. What I love that they're also teaching you is like, what do you do with the dollars after it actually hits your bank account too? And like, how do you make sure you're not going out of business and that you're achieving the financial freedom that you really want? That appealed to me because at our highest point, we were doing about 25 deals a month in the single family space and spending about 26 worth of deals out the door. And that math does not math to like have a good life and profitable and fun and not just wanting to beat your head against the wall all the time. So that's where I first was introduced. Like that volume didn't, wasn't everything. More income didn't solve all the problems. So that's where that's where that understanding came from. Then I worked with another investor in Virginia. And the first thing I asked him was like, you got to show me your numbers. Like your numbers tell your story. They're not going to lie. You can tell me you're doing great. But like, I want to see the real health of the business. And it was like 97% of investors. I looked at it. He didn't have a good real estate investing bookkeeper. So it was all a mess. So it was like, oh, shoot. You know, like now we got to clean this up just so I can see if you're healthy. And then we can go from there and, you know, then make good decision. So that's what we did. That was how I got into even helping on the financial side because I was dangerous enough to know what I was looking for from the back end and like from the books and the numbers and all that. And then I also was able to go in there and like help him clean that up. And I was able to say, hey, here you go. Here's what you're making, spending, keeping on a monthly basis. Like just give them basic, basic numbers. That's when he told me this has been life changing because he was able to then make better decisions. He was able to go out and refinance some of his, he had a few rentals, refinance just a few of them, not even his whole portfolio and got several hundred thousand dollars in cash in his pocket. And he's like, no, <laughs> there's where all my money was going. You know, it's like, but just simple stuff of not knowing where the money was. So that was like a light bulb moment for me because up until that point doing all these deals, I saw going to different events that there was a lot of people like this guy his name is rich rich lennon in richmond virginia a very good friend of mine and you know like a lot of people resonate with rich like they they're running around doing the deals but not knowing where the money's going and if they can what they can do with the money or like where it should go so that's where going to events too where people are doing a million dollars a year but then spending 1.1 1 .1, just like we were her doing like that that you know beating their chest and saying yeah we're doing a lot but then crying at the bar later on it's like a lot of people living like that especially in the real estate world because you can make a lot of money you can make a lot of money on deals you can get good cash flow you can get all these things in place but then what do you do with the money once it actually comes in so that's kind of what led me down that path of even being a real estate investor, then going to to helping this one guy in Richmond, Virginia, Rich Lennon. And then I told a mentor of mine that I was going to start a business, like just to help, just to help know where the money was going. Like this was before I even was introduced to Profit First. And that's where I was like, I just want people to have the understanding because of the power that it put inside of this guy's hands. And so I was telling some of the people in the real estate space and one of my mentors uh, Gary Harper called me and said, I heard you're starting this company. Like you should read profit first. Cause I like this and this book. And I think it's right up your alley. So I read that book one night, took 10 pages of notes was like, boom, I love it. It appeals to me as the entrepreneur. And like, I understand it. 
that's when I started implementing Profit First over the next year in real estate investing companies. Then I went to Mike Michalowicz about a year into implementing it with real estate investors and said, I've done hundreds of deals and I've now helped lots of real estate investors implement Profit First. Could I write Profit First for real estate investing? So that's how that conversation went. I got in front of him, honestly just sent him an email and just said, hey, could I talk to you about writing this book and here's my background and we set up a meeting and he gave the green light there that's how profit first for real estate investing came about as well so it's it's hilarious sometimes you just need to get on the phone with someone i uh, i could tell i could tell a story about that today if you've read rich dad poor dad you know that the original author was robert kiyosaki and sharon lecter i've now met both of them and i like sharon I like, and not that I don't like Robert, just Sharon rings my inner core value bell a little bit more. And so I did, I set a meeting like with her, with her assistant today, just to talk about what we're doing and stuff. Cause I wanted to meet Sharon more and get to know her. So I got invited to her podcast and get to be on actually with Sharon and talk to her one-on-one -on -one and stuff, but like shoot your shot. There, there, there's my, there's my thing for just shooting. I've, I have shot so many times. They don't all land, but like the Mike McCallitz one did. The Sharon Lecter thing did today. It's like just if you're scared to do something, the worst someone could say is no. Honestly, the worst something you could do is they say yes, and then you don't, you fail to perform. So you have to believe in yourself as well, too, to actually perform. So make sure that you're working on the inner stuff, too. But there we go. I'm going down a rabbit trail. So that's how I got Mike in front of Mike McCowitz. That's how the book came about and now have sold over, I think, 10,000 copies between written and the audible and lots of people are resonating with this. I have a fractional CFO company that helps people implement it. And also just, you know, that's gone really well because lots of people make the money, just don't know where it's going and have had bad experiences with bookkeepers and CPAs in the past. And it's like, yeah, why don't you finally have a good one? So that's where, uh, that's where I've kind of landed. So there you go. There's my story at a high level from reading rich dad in college, rich dad, poor dad to uh, actually taking a book and, publishing it and trying to get this message out to help more people. Well, not only that too, you've, you've implemented <clears throat> what you've learned and then obviously you've helped a lot of other people too, um, just firsthand and then through your book, mm -hmm. right? Which yeah. Is, it's amazing. So let's go way back. Who is David before you even got into real estate investing? <laughs> Who? Okay. I bought my first house on 12, 12, 12. And I was, how old would I have been then? 20? So I wasn't very old when I did my first deal. So before that, I was in college. Before that, I was in high school, junior high. You know, like I mean, I'm like the you know, if you've ever seen uh, Miracle on 34th Street, you know, as old as my my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. You know, it's like how far back do you want me to go? So it's like, um, you know, I, I grew up honestly with great parents and had a great home life and. A lot of the reason that I have a lot of the, you know, like I feel like I not only owe it to them, but like I <laughs> owe it to the world. I, I have come from a Christian background too. So I feel like I owe a lot to the good, the blessings that I've had throughout my life as well. Um, which go figure a lot of the stuff I teach now too. some of the money hangups come from some of the things that we get from in our past. And there was stuff I had to work through even with a good home life, even with, you know, good foundational stuff, you know, and all that, there was stuff I had to, to work through. But before that, I was at a railroad industry in college working and, you know, making a sections of track that turned and literally I worked my way up there to be a machinist so I could literally sit on my butt all day and just press numbers, which was great because like I probably got the most jacked I've ever gotten like just from because I was the I was doing like um, sledgehammering for like 10 hours a day from like three to 11 p.m. every single night, then going to college in the morning. That was the worst time of my life too, because I was getting an average of four hours of sleep and not, and I don't brag about that. I hated my that time of my life, but uh, that's where I was able to work up. So that way I wasn't sledgehammering. So I wasn't physically tired that much all the time and was able to read a ton in that job. And like, I could literally sit down and read. I was on third shift. There's no one walking around. So I read while I was doing these you know, punching stuff on the machine. And one of the books that one of my friends handed me was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that was, it was game over from there. Then I started not just reading the stuff I like to read. Then it was more of like what I wanted to read of the real estate world and business and money making and all that type of stuff as well too. So that's kind of what happened right before, you know, the real estate world and 
what happened today. So the last 10 years I've been in the real estate world and done lots of deals with lots of different people and seen every type of deal you can imagine, creative deals, you know, the subject to the lease options, fix and flip, wholesale, turnkey, anything that you can imagine. So let's talk about your first real estate deal. How did you get into real estate and how'd you do your first deal? What'd that look like? So I read the book and was like, rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, and I can't just read, I need to implement. So I'm itching to get something done. Cause that was just me. I like to take action. And if you read my book, you probably get beat over the head. That's one. I read some of these reviews. Once you write a book, you know, you're putting yourself out there. And one of them's like, he says to take action like 52 times. And I'm like, yeah, cause that's what works. So that's where <laughs> I, well, this was 2012. So there was deals all over the place. You could sneeze and like hit a deal with your snot. I mean, it was like that because they were literally on the MLS HUD home store, you know, like they were, they were literally, you could just go anywhere and find a deal. So I got a realtor, found this deal off the MLS. It was in my neighborhood, like five minutes away from where I was living. And, you know, it was a fixture upper. And so I went in there, fixed it up. First thing I did was rent it for the first few months. Then I actually got married during that time and then moved into the house. So we had this nice fixed up house, rented it to the people that we rented it to, you know, like took care of it and stuff. So we got in there, it was still real nice. Then we lived there for two years, moved out of there and did a lease option to that first property. So because, and we did a lease option because I wanted the option to sell it too, because we had lived there for two years. And if you live somewhere two out of five years, when you sell it as a personal residence, there's no capital gains. Well, the guy I found for the lease option was super tenant. He paid early and then six months later, cashed me out of the lease option and actually got a loan. And I'm like, that never happens. Like the default rate is incredibly high. And then I was even managing 80 lease options for the company I was with at that point. And like two of them had ever cashed out. I'm like, this is crazy. So it cashed out. So I got the lump sum capital gains tax-free. And I was like, boom, this is good stuff. So just kept doing real estate deals. But that that first one was a home run, but it's more because I believe the timing of the market was great. So it was hard to mess up a deal back then because there was so much room in the deal to be able to do a lot of different things to it. And even from getting it from the MLS as well. The second thing was I surrounded myself with good people. So I surrounded myself with good people who helped me know the real estate world because I bought that house but and lived in it for two years. In that two year time frame, I became a part of this other company where we were doing a bunch of deals every single month. So I got to see different exit strategies and I got to actually apply that to my personal, you know, investment portfolio as well too. Cause a lot of people think like, oh, I'm just gonna go out there. I'm gonna be a great real estate investor. I was young enough still where I'm like, I've got time. Like, let me learn, but what, let me get paid too while I'm on this company. And then let me do some deals on the side and let me have them walk through this with me and I like I remember buying a deal from them wholesale so I still gave them their wholesale profit but they gave me a good deal where I didn't have to bring as much to closing so I paid a little bit more up front for the actual house didn't have to put as much down so like I was also being able to do stuff like that which was a huge benefit but also getting to buy some of those first deals you know like when I was in my very early 20s and then having those people that were you know years down the road who were much smarter than I was and helping me with these deals. So I knew two years into it, like I knew a lease option, how to set it up. I had a connection where if I did the marketing and got calls, I could take, you know, send it to this guy. He could vet them. He's the one that found super tenant and locked him up and put him in the property. So it was like, I had good systems and processes because I learned it as well too, kind of like building the plane on the way up, you know, buying these deals and learning different exit strategies. So that's kind of how that, tenure went because I say like I went to college during that time when I was doing the railroad industry and stuff but then my real education happened once I started in that real estate company because then over those five I was there for five years we were doing a ton of deals and I did I learned way more about people about relationships about making money but then also just about real estate and like the things that I wanted to learn about as well too it wasn't now just something I was taking for college credit it was like this is real life stuff so that's kind of what got me started. And so I'm all about groups like this, like surround yourself with Joe's and Jen's who have been down the road, who are helping you, who are like 
that we know what to do and what to avoid. Or like they might have connections, you know, like the here, reach out to this person because we know if you go with this person, they can vet this or they can do this or that or whatever it might be. So that's where get around good people too, because that saved me a ton of of heartache and and stress. So there's kind of the the beginning portion of my my journey. You know, and it's funny you say that because we have a lot of the folks that work for us and they're young 20, some are in their teens, who I'm going to share this example with. <laughs> and as you're saying, I'm like, yeah, this fits everybody that's currently working with us now, working for us right now. So that's the key is really, you know, learn, get paid while you're learning, and then also grow your portfolio at the same time. And that's the smartest, best way to do it. So your college, did was there any special ed education that you took for college that made you well prepared for real estate? Yes, I would. I went to college for teaching, so <laughs> so no, not for real estate specifically, but yeah. like I went for secondary education because I always thought I'd be a teacher because I love teaching and I love being able to help. So no, it didn't really help for real estate, the actual doing of the deals, but it helped with talking to people, being able to communicate something that could be complicated, learning it enough to be able to teach it as well too. And like, cause when you talk to a seller, you're really talking to them about something that's complicated, especially if you're in this group, creative financing. Like if you say the words creative financing to the seller, you probably lost them. You know, it's like, how do we take something that's more complicated and make it as simple and teach the other person and see, cause you could even, if you're in part of this group too, you probably can understand that you are the solution to a lot of these people's problems. Like they don't have other options and you have better options than just beating them over the head with the wholesale hammer or like other things like that. So like you can do creative things. So that's where, well, that's what I learned in college. And that's why now being able to teach the profit first. So I, I definitely picked up skills, but if I had to do it again, I don't know, would I go back to college? Would I not? I would only not go back to college if I picked Rich Dad Poor Dad up sooner and had a different education to go out of the gate with sooner as well, too. I would probably still go there as well, too, because it was a Christian college. So, you know, like just affirming my faith more, get, digging roots in, getting my foundation for when I have a family. And it's where I met my wife. So I would definitely go back to meet her again, you know, a thousand times over. So it was worth going to college for that. So there's some of the things that set me up for like the rest of my life. But a lot of it didn't deal with real estate specifically, but it taught other skills that helped me with just communication and other things too. Well, I got to know what subject were you going to teach? Oh, well, what do I look like I would teach? So English and math, you know, like I, I got the English and math vibe. So that was definitely me. I was like, the, those were the two ones that, that fell into the category of what I wanted to, that I was exploring in the college realm. I could definitely see that. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. I think I, we love going back a ways just to kind of hear where stories start and just kind of, is it's great to see somebody having success, having, you're an author, you have helped so many people, but it's nice to help those who aren't in those shoes yet to kind of put themselves where maybe you were. So any advice, those who are maybe watching this, they haven't done their first deal yet, or maybe they've done some deals and they need to start implementing this profit first. I know there's kind of two questions there, but I kind of yeah. want to touch on, touch on some of those. If you haven't done a deal, make offers, get out there, talk to people. Nothing else matters. Not your website, not flyers, not anything. It matters of how do I get someone to talk to me? How can I talk to them? And how can I make sure what is their root problem? You're just trying to get to the root problem because if you can solve it, great. If you can't, have people in your network that you can help them. So at the end of the day, they're still you're still making an impact on that person. So if it's like, okay, creative doesn't work here. I'm not a real estate agent, but I know a good one that they really should list it. You know, like the question of, you know, like why would you sell a really nice house like this? You know, so it's things like that to make sure that you are the solution. But get in front of people. Talk to people, you know, like that is how you get deals done. It, it's so easy to do everything else, to take action on the stuff that is not productive and set up all the spreadsheets and do all this stuff and do all the analyzation, just make offers. Then if you're like, oh shoot, I just made an offer. If you're a part of this group too, you've got people to be able to say, help, like they actually want to talk to me. I've actually given them some terms like, is this okay? You know, it's like, go to your network, go to people if you're not sure how to lock it up or what, you know, the next steps, there's gonna be someone there that can help walk you through. But if you get over the, the fear of that first one, it's game over. Then you're like, okay, I could do this again, you know, and again and again and again. I would also say too, 
as you're getting into this, you need to become a student of business. If this is something where you are becoming a real estate investor slash business owner, there are a lot of hats that you wear. One of the most important hats is becoming a very good salesperson of knowing the, the nuances of sales. So that way you can know that you are not <laughs> that you're not the sleazy car salesman, but you're actually trying to solve a problem. And how do you ask the questions in a tactful way to get to the root problem? People lie to me all the time. They, they say at the end, you know, let me talk to my wife. Let me do this or that. And you know what? It's being able to take that extra step and say, is it really about that? Do you not trust me? Or is it the money? Like, am I not the solution? Because I feel like we just talked about this was the issue. This is your problem. We have this solution. So just tell me what's going on for real. It's the same thing with a seller. Seller comes in, they say, you know, all this stuff. And like, this is in your ears are starting to get, you know, burned because you're like, this is good. I know I can help them. And then at the end, they're like, well, well, let me talk. You know, that sounds like an okay, but let me talk to my, you know, dog and their friend. You know, it's like they're going to give you any excuse not to sign the agreement that you want them to. And then you just have to be able to willing to take it a couple steps further without being obnoxious without being like, okay, just pushing them out the door. You're just trying to get to what is the real issue here? Because now it's not an issue of the deal anymore. If I can solve it, it's an issue with me. So I want to make sure what did I do to turn you off? Because then, then you're getting them to answer emotionally, which is a lot better than logically, because you're trying to get them to say, why, why wouldn't I go with them? You know, like, what is it that stopped me? Because then you can break through. Because if it's like, if you don't think I'm the best solution, what solution can I give you? So there you go. That'd be number one. Become a student of sales, but then make offers. Just talk to people, okay? Everything else does not matter. Then once you actually start the second part of their question, because this one flowed, the, the questions here flowed very well. Because once you actually start doing the deals, you need to know if money hits your account after you're like, you know what? I was able to overcome their objections. I knew I was the best fit for them. And I was able to close that deal. And boom, here's the money into the account. They, you know, like I got the down payment from someone or whatever type of deal that you've done where money actually hits it. And you're like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, so like you have to know some way to control the cash because I don't care if you're at your first deal or your thousandth deal, you have to manage the money that flows through your fingers and through your bank account. That's something that a lot of people don't realize and they're embarrassed to talk about for a lot of different reasons. They're embarrassed to talk about money. It could be because our parents growing up, maybe you had parents that were either poor, middle class that said money doesn't grow on trees. You know, we can't talk about that. We don't, we can't do that. We can't go on that trip. We can't blah, 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 all these limiting beliefs. Or maybe you grew up like me in a Christian background where it's like taboo kind of to talk about money. The love of money is the root of all evil. And like, you've got some things there where you're like, I don't even know, like I feel guilty about making the money or I feel guilty about talking about this with them or knowing where I should put my money or is it okay for me to take profit or not? Whatever, I don't care what type of background, but a lot of us have those types of just money issues that go through our heads or money scripts that we're telling ourselves. So we have to kind of break out of that too and say, okay, in order to be a healthy business, what do I need to, what is the real purpose of this business? The purpose of your business, no matter what, if you run a for-profit business, the purpose of the business is to be profitable. Go figure, right? Your purpose might be different. Your purpose might be financial freedom, whatever that means to you. Vacations, cars, giving to causes, going, you know, taking trips, spending time with the people that you love, whatever that is. So it's like, that's what your purpose might be. But in order to get to that purpose, you can't be struggling and thinking about money all the time too. That's the other thing. Like, this is what I teach all the time about profit first. And people think like, I talk about money all the time. Yes, I do. So you don't have to. Because if you're struggling with money right now, or you're thinking about it too much, then you don't have good systems in place that help you override all the stuff that has been pumped into you up to this point. Like we've been conditioned not to be the business owner. Then we feel bad that we can't understand the money that's flowing through our accounts and throwing of uh, flowing through our business like we should once we became the real estate investor shouldn't we know what to do with the money and like you know as long as i just keep spending 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 it should all come back to me right it's like well no it's just not the spending it's not just the income it's the what how do we make sure that we're utilizing every dollar and giving it a name so that's why a profit first appealed to me you know then that's why i wrote the book because if you are in the real estate world you probably have read rich dad poor dad or the richest man in Babylon, or like a lot of these books that deal with the subject of money too. 
wherein rich dad, poor dad, pay yourself first, richest man in Babylon, a portion of all I have is mine to keep. They all have their terminology for what profit first teaches. Profit first teaches sales minus profit equals expenses, meaning I make a sale, I take my profit first, then the expenses are to grow the business. So like making sure that the, that's where the term profit first comes from because you're thinking about how healthy do I want my business to be first versus hopefully we hopefully at the end of the day we're profitable or at the end of the year we're profitable and actually have something to show for it which if that's if you've built it on the hope and pray plan you've already lost so that's where profit first really puts it into perspective of like okay what do i do with i want to make sure first things first that we are taking our profit first profit first puts an actual system in place it's the envelope method which Dave Ramsey has made popular, whether you love him or hate him, he's got some good financial principles. One of them is give every dollar a name. And I would say for your business, you need to give every dollar a name. So it comes into your business, where are you putting it into a bank account and set up multiple bank accounts that are called different things that help you know where the money's going. So setting up like a profit account or an owner's comp account, like making sure that you're able to pay yourself making sure that the profit of the business is there for why you started your business. <laughs> why did you start it? Well, well, maybe it was to get out of a W-2 job. Maybe it was to, you know, go on vacation. Maybe it was to give or whatever it was, why you started your business. You know, the deeper reason, maybe you have young kids at home, want to spend more time with them, or maybe you don't have kids at home and you're like, I just want a lot of money now. You know, like whatever it is, it's like, that's your reason for the business. That's why having some of these accounts that actually you flow money into that helps you accomplish why you started it. Because a lot of us here are not gonna build Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, you know, Uber, Airbnb, like these big mega corporations. We're going to do and be the legacy bringer for our family and change our family's legacy. So you don't have to be thinking, I need to be doing a billion dollars a year. You need to be thinking, how do I get to my first six figures? Then from there, do I want to go to, do I even want to go to seven figures? Because that's the other thing too, as you start to grow and scale, if you're built on the hope and pray plan and you don't have a system like profit first, you go from six figures to seven figures and you have just 10 X your issues, your money issue. That's what we were doing. We were doing five deals a month, went to 25 deals a month, but we still didn't have the core, you know, like we hadn't solved the root issues of the money flow and the cash flow and knowing where the money should go. So we literally went from five deals a month and spending six deals worth to 25 deals a month and spending 26 worth. So it's like the deals didn't fix that problem. It was the system of knowing where every dollar is going and being more intentional with the dollars. So that's where setting up, that's what the profit first system is about. The practical side is setting up physical bank accounts that help you know where the money should go. And I've got, I could go into that more, but that's just the overview of what profit first is, why we teach it and why I believe if you're struggling with money at all in your life anywhere, there's a couple things. You've probably got some past stuff that's that has to be worked through. And then secondly, we don't have, you don't have a good system set up for the money. You might have one to put offers in. You might have one for the operations and like actually closing the deal or you have contracts or things like that or like the stuff that you're learning here. A lot of people don't have systems for the money. Money comes in, what do I do with it? That answers that question. I come and speak to a lot of groups like this. And one of the biggest questions I get is like, I just got my first check. What do I do with it? You know, like, and it's like, where do I put the money to make sure that I can continue doing this without putting it all back? Cause I still want to eat and I want to get away from my W2. I want to do this or that. So that's kind of where, if you're not those two questions, again, if you aren't, haven't done your first deal, make sure to make offers. If you have done your first deal and you're on your way, get a system like profit first. So you don't have to worry about the money and you have a system for it. And you take up thinking about the money from hours a week to minutes a week. So that way it just flows through your business and you have a good system set up. So there you go. There's the answer to those two questions. And hopefully that answered them. It probably more than answered them. So my bad. No, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I really think that I, I know just hearing you, it definitely just, it brings so much to light because as a coach, it, we really always want to be presenting people with thoughts like this. So, well, and the thing is what I love about the book. And so if you have, if you're listening to this guys, you're realizing if you are a real estate investor, especially if you've done a deal or two, or you're going to plan on to, it's no better way to set your foundation right from the very beginning. You need this book. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not just saying this because what David is describing was, you know, typical investor 101, you know, including Jen and myself, there were plenty of times in our career, especially in the very beginning, where I had a W-2 job, we had some rentals that we burned, 
and cash flow to me wasn't a thing. So we did put really short terms on when we refinance these properties that haven't paid off quickly, but we weren't making cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so here it is, yeah, John and I, in the beginning, a couple of hand, you know, the first handful of our deals, we had great equity. We were paying them down. We were writing off depreciation. But at the end of the day, we had no money coming in. Yeah. And, you know, if, if we implemented some of these earlier, this would have helped us tremendously. So the one thing I, I many, but the one thing I loved about Profit First is you actually give the breakdown of, okay, you've got money. It should be in this type of situation. Do you want to briefly yeah. go into that? I don't want to spoil the book because you I already did. Spoil it. This will be good. The, I, I give this stuff away all the time. I, I want to give it away. Like what you just said there is why I keep doing stuff like this or traveling or whatever, because people say, man, I wish I would have had this years ago when I first started for a couple reasons. They'd have more money. Secondly, it's like the earlier you start the habits, the better financial habits you'll have when you're bigger as well, too. So it's like, yeah, you could be on your first couple deals right now. But think about when you're just starting to do 10, 15, 20, you have a 50 unit, 100 unit, you know, or whatever. It's like your money problems, you don't want them to scale with you. You want to make sure you cut it off wherever you are right now to be able to be like, okay, I understand what the issue is. Let me fix it. Let me put these systems in place. Then you'll have good habits from wherever you are right now. The earlier, the better. That way you can scale up and not have a lot of the hurt and heartache that a lot of investors go through. So there you go. There's my two cents of what, what Joe just said right there. So then on the other side of what is profit first and like what bank accounts would you set up? One of the biggest issues I see and the biggest problems that people have and that they mistakes that they make in the real estate world is having one big bank account where all their money goes in, all the money goes out, and it's just, you know, all the time, in and out, never really understanding what's going in or out of that account. Like, is that my money? Is there profit in there? Oh, shoot, taxes are due. Do I need to, can I take out from there? Or marketing's going to run or payroll's going to run. All this stuff. And yet that's how most entrepreneurs make their decisions. They look at their bank account and they say, do I have money in there? Good, I'll write the check. I don't have money in there. I should be real frugal and hopefully that deal closes next week. If it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, So that's how a lot of people manage the money that flows through their hands. And that's where Prof First says, okay, instead of that, I wanna give you clarity on every dollar that comes in. So set up some physical bank accounts. I call the first three accounts the Golden Trio. Talk about this in the book too. I love Star Wars, Harry Potter, you know, these big epic sagas, right? They've got the three main heroes, Luke, Han, Leia, Harry, Ron, Hermione, making sure good wins in the end. Your business that you're creating is your legacy. It's your movie. It's your big epic saga of making sure that you either pass on these properties or you sell them all one day and live, you know, the millionaire life and pass that on to your children, whatever it is that you want from real estate. That's what it's about to make sure. So we need three main heroes in your business to make sure you win in the end. So what are those three? The golden trio of bank accounts to set up first is profit, owner's comp, and owner's tax. These are business bank accounts that you set up, business checking accounts that you set up at your bank. So when you name them, profit, owner's comp, owner's tax, there's income and OPEX too. Those are the other two foundational ones. I'll go through all of these to make sure you have the differences between them because especially the golden trio, I get questions all the time. What's the difference between profit and owner's comp? Profit is we've talked about is why did you start your business? This is the why account. Why did you start it? Was it to get out of your W-2? Was it to get to you know a, this level financially? Was it to buy that dream house, to the dream car, or to take vacations? That's what the think of that as the icing on the cake account, that profit account to make sure that the money that goes in there, that once a quarter we take it up to 50% out of that account and use it for why we started our business. I'm going to take it out of that profit account and then I'm going to go out there and give, or I'm going to go out there and save towards this car or like, you know, or whatever it is. Why did you start your business? That's the profit account to me. And to make sure that your business is actually profitable and you feel it as well too. The owner's comp is actually my favorite account now because it helps you get out of your rat race. It used to be the profit account and you would think like with the profit first system, isn't it the profit account? No, owner's comp, you know why? Because it's the account that you use to pay yourself on a consistent basis weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, like you're taking that in, in shorter chunks than once a quarter. 
I don't care if you're doing distributions once a month or if you actually pay yourself a W-2 job and, you know, like from your business and a W-2 and then you take it bi-weekly or whatever, but you're paying yourself for the work in the business because if you're like a lot of people, you want to get into real estate to get out of the rat race. And yet a lot of people find themselves instead of living paycheck to paycheck, they live deal to deal in the real estate world once they come over here. And that's where we have to stop that cycle. If you've ever played cash flow 101, where you're literally going around in the circle on that game board over and over and over again until you get to the fun track, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's game, that's where it's like you're just living deal to deal now. Hopefully you're landing on those green spaces, you know, and that's where if you have the owner's comp account, how much can we put into that account on a monthly basis to get to where we could either quit our W-2 or it's like, this is what covers all of our expenses on a monthly basis or like, this is where we want to be. I was on a call with a guy today. He's like, I have about 10K coming in right now net, but like 25 and if I had 25K from my rentals I a month, I would be totally fine and I wouldn't need to do any of the flips or do any of the wholesale deals. Like to him, that's what he needs to get out of the, his rat race, what he wants so that way he doesn't have to do the hustle grind work. So it's like that's where it's different for everyone. It could be low numbers, high numbers. That all depends on your current lifestyle. But the owner's comp account is to give you a very clear goal of am I putting enough money in there? Like for him, when we work with him, it's more like, okay, how are we able to fill that up with 25 k a month from these specific properties that you're purchasing? And so it's like going into there on a monthly basis to know, have you actually escaped your rat race or gotten to that first goal that you want to get to? It just gives you very clear goals of how you're paying yourself. So that's the big difference. Owner's comp, you pay yourself more frequently and it's for actually paying to live and to eat. And then profit is more of like, why did I start my business? The bigger overview, the bigger picture. Owner's tax account, that third one of the golden trio, that one's for you to be able to make sure at tax time you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off saying, oh shoot, I got to do deals in order to pay my taxes. That's, I know if you're in this group, you could take depreciation. You could take a lot of the thing. You can hopefully pay as little tax as possible. But if you do any active income, if you still have your W-2 or anything like that, why not have the business pay for the taxes? So make sure that you're saving for taxes when deals close versus stressing out at tax time because the, the money's not there. So those are the golden trio. Those help you know what you're keeping too. All three of those are keep accounts. Am I keeping money from my business that's actually benefiting me, the owner? Because if I'm healthy, then everyone else is feeling good too. My employees, my spouse, my children. Usually when the money issues come is when your shoulders get tight and you get worked up. And a lot of people have lots of things that come from from just the root of the money is the issue. So like, why don't we take a little bit of that off your shoulders and be like, you don't have to worry about the money. Here's how much you're keeping. It's enough for what you need. So stop thinking about it as much and live your life and live a fun one. So those are the keep accounts to take some of that financial stress off your plate. The income account is what we're making. That's literally just a separate account from your operational expenses where money comes in and just sits until you transfer it. Guess where first? The golden trio because profit first. So to transfer it to what you need first and then to OPEX to fund the expenses of the business. OPEX is what you spend out the door. That's what's going out on a monthly basis or weekly or however often you're paying your bills. That's where those all the outflow of money comes from OPEX. Those are the five fundamental accounts from profit first. I add a sixth one for profit first for real estate investing that is not related to the foundational fi first five because I call it OPM, other people's money. So if you're taking money from someone else, a private lender to close on a deal, this is more for rehabs, rentals, like that type of thing. So if you're acquiring any type of money from an outside source for a specific project that's going on in your business, don't mingle it in with those first five. You know, like keep that separate over here. Like make sure that you're not mingling it together because that's why a lot of investors get in trouble. They take money from other people, especially if they have one big account. They feel really good when they have a lot of money in there, but that's some of their private lenders funds in there. And then, oh shoot, we've run out of the private money and now we have to go to lender B to finish project A and now you're in the Ponzi scheme race of the real estate world. So like don't get there. OPM is to help you stay away from Ponzi schemes. So those are the six fundamental accounts that I teach in the real estate investing book. I also teach that, honestly, that's just the overview of the system and the account that you could set up, but you could customize it for your business. Why, why did you start the business? What are the goals? Do you want to buy your own properties? Do you want to know how much you need to spend in marketing? Like you could set up goals specifically or bank accounts for specific goals like that too. It's just helping you from the perspective of the entrepreneur. You look at your bank account probably a whole lot more than a QuickBooks system as an entrepreneur. 
that's just how we're wired. Like I said, like I'm even wired more like that. Like that's just why it appealed to me so much because it was like, I can look at my bank accounts and know, are we okay? Are there any yellow lights that I know I need to talk to the team about? So that's where it just gives you a very clear goal of, are we getting to where we want to be? And are we, are we anywhere near the business death line? Like, are we running out of money? Well, you might be running out of money in OPEX, but since you have other accounts set up, that shouldn't be that if you run out of money there, you're running out of money everywhere. That's just another added benefit of the profit first system. It's like you're hiding money from yourself, giving yourself some good discipline habits when it comes to, to wealth and to money. You're not spending every dollar that you make. So there you go, Joe. There's the, the bottom line of like some of the accounts that you could set up and the, the types and what they're called and the foundational ones that I suggest. So getting wealthy is not an accident. It's discipline. Yeah, it's, it's taking that action consistently over time. So discipline, it is definitely the, and a system. Make it easy on yourself too. You know, it's like in your W-2 job, some of those have those automatic withdrawals that go into like a 401k or whatever. This is like doing it for yourself, but as a system inside of your business, money comes into income. I transfer to these accounts first because they're for me and to make sure that I have money for the things that I want my money there for. Awesome. So I want to be able to, we're finishing the countdown here. So we're, we're getting close to wrapping this up, but Everything you're saying, thank goodness this is recorded. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. Some of you, including myself, you might want to watch this two or three times because what Dave's dropping right now, guys, it's it sounds amazing and it is, but this is something that might not soak in the first time you hear it. So hit rewind, listen to what he just said. He just spent so much, dropped so much amazing value. Um, I'm so grateful to have you here. So yeah. Today, I, I love Dave. I love everything you're talking about. Like, how do I find out more? I, I read the book. Like, how do I get more of you in my life? Sure. So I do have a company, simplecfo.com. I'll also put in the chat, if you want the full copy of the ebook, if you're okay, I'll drop it in here. And I actually created as my team created a site for the Delphaves here. Let me put this in here. There we go. And everyone could go there. You get I call it the find your keep number worksheet. This is like how you find what you need from your company. So if you're like, how do I, how much do I put in the owner's comp account? There's a very simple one page on the, where do I, how much do I need from my business? That's the first thing you get. The second thing is the full ebook. So if I like ebooks too, because I can actually copy sections and put them into like a Google doc and be like, here's my first steps. So that's why I give the ebook and it's the easy to transfer, you know, transfer to you in the fastest amount of time. You could schedule a call with our team. What we do is fractional CFO services. We put a CFO on the team, a part-time one to manage the financial end. We do implement profit first. We also make sure that you have the right bookkeeper. Like you're not having the same things that I've just encountered twice today where someone hired a bookkeeper. They were the wrong person. They now have to clean up a year's worth of stuff. Like that's why I even created this company versus a bookkeeping or CPA company. It's like you need someone who's a leader that actually makes sure that stuff is going the right place so that way you don't have to clean up and spend thousands of thousands of dollars on, on, on junk when you need that data to be able to grow your business profitably. Then we implement a dashboard. So we implement the CF, simple CFO dashboard, which is literally just a Google sheet that we've created for the real estate investing world that the CFO fills in of like, where should I move the money? If I hire someone, are they gonna be profitable or not? And like, let's track that. You know, like if you have deals that are closing, how much money do I have versus how much money do I need? And how over this many days, like, will I have enough before I run out of money or do I need to go secure more? Like just things like that that are very, much for the real estate world. So that's what we created there. So if you go to that site, it goes to simplecfo.com. It gives you all those free stuff. Plus you can book a call with our team if you want to. I'm not going to pressure you on there. What I'm literally going to say is, are we a good fit? If not, then here's some other people we have. Like here is a good person that I recommend for bookkeeping or CPA or whatever. So that way I at least give you value and give you that, you know, make an impact there. One of the other things you get there too is profit first for personal. I put together a spreadsheet and a little video walkthrough because everyone asked me like, okay, I'm good on the business side. Like I want to make sure at home that I'm not spending every dollar I'm making too. Well, there you go. I created a little thing for that, that I do in my personal life. And that has helped me separate out my money and like naming some of the accounts, different things as well too. That's where, uh, that's one of the things you get as well. So there you go. That's how you get more of me and more of this. If you go to simplecfo.com, we have our podcast there. We do have a Facebook group, Prospers for Real Estate Investors. I'm very active in, do at least one live call a week and do several posts a week and answer questions in there as they come up. 
So just trying to get the word of profit first out there and like, I let us worry about the money so you can just worry about getting the deals closed. So I don't know about some of you who are listening, but yeah, this is going to be replayed again on our YouTube channel, things like that. And it's at our Facebook groups, but this is something I know I'm not going to try to jump the gun on it. And I know Jen's going to say like, yeah, sign us up for that. Um, you know, and it's always good to just have to make sure, because once you're a real estate investor, you're dealing with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, if not multi-millions of dollars. Right. And you really want to make sure for the small fraction that it would cost you to make sure that you're doing it right, it's going to save you tears, the stress, a stress, right. yeah. and nightmares, or, and at least, you know, the health of your business, which is key because what's like what you said, David is, you know, if you're doing this, you're doing it to create a lifestyle, whatever that looks like to get out of the rat race. And yeah, yeah if you don't have the right systems in place, it, it certainly does feel that. So the final thought I did want to just ask if you are already bringing in the money and you just don't know how, like what is the very first step to do that was a question that did come in like bills are always due so like how do i just start like maybe is there one action other than the through the trio there but one more little something you can leave us with that's a that's a loaded question too because i need to know okay. the person and, and know the background and where they're coming from as well because there that can be answered several different ways but i will say in general where do I start? Number one, I would do go here like I, I the first steps for the gifts, like figure out what you need. And you're like, well, how does that help me? What's that first step for the bills and all that? Well, no, like we got to Your business is run the way you've been running it up to this point without this information. So let's go backwards a couple steps and say, this is what I need. I need to know, am I making enough? And like, I need that number first. So that way I at least have a goal to go after. And if you're like, well, I've done that, then read the book and start implementing the bank accounts. That's probably one of the biggest things you can do because even though bills are due, it's going to let you know, I don't have any extra money to put towards these other accounts. Like we'll do an assessment with people right away. And sometimes they're spending 110 of the hundred percent, you know, of the, what they're making. So they're, they're spending 110%. And it's like, well, <laughs> time to use this system to its fullest and start chunking down on that 110 or bringing more in like are you just not bringing enough in for what you need because everyone thinks it's always income it's not always income it's and it's not always cutting expenses either it's literally sometimes these deals just aren't closing like if i close the deals that were actually on the board i'd be okay you know so it's like how do we make sure there's better processes or is it something that we can control so the first thing i would do is i've is find what i need to keep the second thing is can we start to implement the actual bank account so we know okay i do know bills are always due but that's one time thing. Setting up the accounts is a one time thing unless you go back and want to add more later on. Once you've got the system, you're like, oh, this works. You're like, let's set this up to know, to give yourself that baseline of knowing, okay, bills are due all the time. They'll always be due. So that's where, you know, that's that's why getting this system now, I get asked the same question in a different format. I'm not profitable. Will this system help me? It's like, Yes, it's going to point out if you already are feeling that now it's going to put a number to it to say, how much do I need to be able to scale back on these expenses to be able to put towards these accounts. So can we at least get the baseline of what's coming in, what's going out, what am I making, spending, keeping, because that's really if you dug in a little deeper of what I taught you today, if you set up those accounts, you from the entrepreneur level can analyze your business better than almost 97% of the entrepreneur community. Because if you know what comes in your income, that's what you make. What goes out is OPEX. What do you spend? And then what do you keep the other three accounts? So it gives you a little framework there to know. Bills are always due and they're always going out. But how much is that? Let me now see since OPEX is literally just all the money that's going out. How much is it physically going out of my accounts? And how much can I, is there any that is left over? Because here's how much came into income. So that way I know at least do I have any margin or wiggle room in there. That would be the first thing is know what you need and then start setting up the system to give yourself the power of control, to control the money instead of having it control you. If you're saying bills are due all the time, your money is controlling you at this point. I don't want it to. Like you shouldn't be thinking about that. That's another thing too. Once you start to systemize the money that goes in and out, you'll also start to say, you know what, bills are always due, but I'm going to control when they're due. 
okay, the vendor, can I pay on the 15th of the month? Because I pay my I pay my stuff on Fridays. So get your contractor, get your bills to me by Wednesday by at 4 p.m. I will approve them on Thursday and Friday. I pay them out and you'll you'll have the money in your account. You know, it's like, can you create a system that doesn't also give you a headache as well? Once you start thinking in systems on the money, you start thinking that in other things as well, too. Like, okay, maybe I don't have to have these bills due all the time. Maybe they might be due, but they're going to be due on like, this is when I pay them. And this that way I don't have to think about them every single day that they're coming in and out. People are always nagging me. Whatever you're allowing is what you're is what will come through. So like don't just allow everyone to bug you all the time. Say, you know what? No, this is when I pay the bills. This is my process. Like have some of those standards as you get into this system as well, too. So there you go. Hopefully that helped with the first few steps that you can take. Then some of the benefits that go from there as well. So wow. control, discipline. So what do we get to meet today? We get to meet David. We know he's an amazing person outside of real estate, got an amazing track record inside of real estate, and then an amazing wealth of knowledge to help folks who are also real estate too. So super inspiring, David. And also like just taking this action and be able to show us that it does work and hearing these stories that you're sharing, you know, without having to give names or anything, like you're painting those pictures for all of us to so just know that we can come out on the other side. If you are in a little bit of a hole or a big hole, there is a way out. Yeah. So We've seen not- people, very big holes, dig their way out. <laughs> 280,000 in the hole was one of the biggest ones that we've seen. We've had people just from all walks of life, like this is where just getting that control over where your money's going gives you a lot of control to get out of the issues you might be having in the business. So guys, once again, thank you so much, David, for coming today. Profit first for real estate investing. If you want to learn more about David and you definitely should, uh, simplecfo.com. Yeah, we'll share the link again in the in the group. And if you have any questions, he is awesome. So I'm sure that him and his team will reach back out to you if you reached out to them. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, thank so, you very much for having me on. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. You have a great Tuesday. And thank you guys for showing up today on this Tuesday. Um, this was a wealth of information. Please listen to this May again. I have to have you back on next and, year. I do this like annually. A yeah. little reboot. <laughs> hey, that's one of the fun parts. I've been doing this long enough now that people start having me on like the year after. And then I get to hear people's stories of like, hey, I started that. I was on a group a few months ago and that one guy was like, I did that from the last time you talked last year and it saved my business because like I had money in these accounts. These properties didn't close when I thought they would and I was still able to pay everyone and then be able to reimburse myself once those properties officially closed you know, the month after I thought they would. And I'm like, that's what I want to hear. Like, just start the start small steps and you could either save yourself from going out of business or like this other guy, he's like, I did less deals than I've ever done, but have more money in my accounts. Like, what what was I doing with my money before? You know, it's like those types of things where, yeah, I would love to to come back if some people have implemented just here. Like, what has it done for you? Well, our students in the past have definitely loved it and have, and we have too, and we will definitely have you back. Thank you very much. Well, have a great day. Thank you so much. See you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye, guys.